Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to render depth of field in X particles for Cinema 4D. Now this is something you might think would be pretty straightforward, and it is, but it's something that's not on by default. So it's actually it can be very frustrating trying to figure out how to do this technique. So don't worry if you're feeling frustrated. I was feeling that same way, but hopefully we have the answers for you right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to X particles and we're going to make an XP system. And then we're just going to click here on emitters and we're going to create an emitter. And I'm just going to hit play on the timeline just to generate some particles so we can get some stuff here. Now just to show my point, what we're going to do is we're going to go under generators and we're going to create a skinner. Now the way X particles works is if you create some type of geometry with the emitter, then depth of field is just like with any other object and it will work no problem. So I'm going to click on my skinner and pull in my emitter here. Now if we go into here, and for all purposes we're going to show both types of depth of field. We're going to go up into our settings and we're going to use the standard renderer standard one right here it just pops up I'm going to click here it's going to open that up and we for the standard renderer to work we're going to have to go under effects and we're going to have to go to depth of field and by default this is okay here we're just going to leave all these and we're going to close this and we're going to need to make a camera and we're going to hop in that camera just by clicking that and we're going to position ourselves relatively around here now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're going to click on our skinner and lower our polygon size down to 5, which is the same as our polygon render size. This way, it'll be the same resolution when we click render. See when I click render, there we go. Now we're not getting any depth of field, and that's because we haven't turned it on for our camera yet. So if I go to my camera, and I go to object, we'll see here we have our focus distance, which this we don't have to worry about yet. This is only going to have to worry about if we use the physical render, which I highly recommend, but I still want to show how to use the actual um, depth of field for the this standard renderer. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our details tab right here. And we're going to click on depth of field frontal blur and depth of field rear blur. And we're just going to click render. And the thing is if we render here, no depth of field. Oh, actually it does render depth of field. I was wrong. It must have changed it. It actually does. But notice it doesn't render the depth of field till afterwards. Very interesting. So what this means is to position our depth of field, we can leave our camera, and we have these points. And we can grab these points here. This is where our depth of field starts, and I'd like it to be about here. And this is where our depth of field is considered fully out of focus. So actually, I'm going to pull this end about up here, and we can pull the whole thing back down. So we're going to pull the whole thing down to here. This is actually where that starts. This is the end, which I would like to pull this all the way up to zero. I usually like that at zero. And we're going to pull this back so it starts about here. And we're going to take the end up here. I'm going to pull this at past this point is where everything is considered completely out of focus. So we're going to hop into our camera, click render, and there we go. There's that point. Now if we'd like more blur, we have to hop into our settings and adjust our blur strength, pull that up render the picture viewer and it'll churn that out and we're going to get very blurred because I put it to a full 100 percent so um, that's going to take a while going to churn through you can see here we do have our blur but the question is and this is what a lot of people struggle with is how do we render this without having physical geometry so I'm going to put this to a lower number maybe 25 percent just so we can have less render without this. I'm going to turn off our Skinner. We're not going to use this. We're going to render the actual particles. So let's reposition our camera. I'm going to put it about maybe here. And we're going to hop out and we're going to pick where we'd like it to be focused. So we got this little point here. We're going to say I focus here and you're going to be fully out of focus anything past here. So that's our focus point. So I can hop in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have to create a texture because if we render now we're going to see nothing. So what we got to do is we're going to go down here to create. We're going to click on that. We're going to go to shader and we're going to go down to X particles material. Now we have that right there. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to drag it up all the way over here to our emitter and then we're going to let go. Now when we click render, we have all our particles all being rendered. Now you can see right off the bat 
that our particles are getting blur. Now, you're probably having this problem, though, with no motion blur like I have, is because you don't want to use the standard render, which is completely understandable, because to be quite honest, the depth of field for this is very unrealistic, and it does give you control, but it's nowhere near as good, and it takes longer to render. The physical render is, in my opinion, just better all the way around, and it is much nicer. So without further ado, let's, um, let's take our camera, and we'll just pull our end, and we'll pull that back. We'll pull that back to about here. This is the end of the frontal blur. So the blur will start here, be perfectly in focus here, and end at most blur here. So we'll have blurred back here, less and less blur all the way to this point, and then more and more blur all the way past this point. So now that we have that, let's click render, and you can kind of see here. We're not really on focus on any particle, though, so we still don't have anything really going on there which is okay. We can try and, and see it's just not a very easy tool to use, unlike the, the physical. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn off our frontal and our rear blur, and we're going to go in our settings. We're going to switch over to physical now, and underneath the physical settings, we click on depth of field. You guys probably already done this before, so we're going to have that on. We need that for our depth of field, and we can hop in our camera, and then if we go under our object tab, we have our focus distance. We can just grab this in pinpoint, particles position in space, which we have that selected, and I believe this sets our focus distance right here. So this is our new, much easier. We just put this wherever we want it to be in focus. So relatively right here. Render, there we go. And just to make it easier, I'm going to go to size and crank these guys up a little bit so it'll be a little bigger. There we go, it's going to be much easier. Nothing very pretty to look at, but it's all for demonstration purposes. So if we hit render now, they're getting no depth of field. So then you naturally want to go to camera, physical, and pull this down to something really low, like an f-stop of 1. Render still nothing. So then we go a little further, say 0.1. Render again, still nothing. So at this point, you'd probably make a cube. I'm just going to build that, shrink them down, and you would uh, do a test render. Just pull this guy Pull him way out there. We'll go into his coordinates. I'll just take on Z and we'll just pull him way out down there. Now we got like this kind of depth thing. We'll hit render now. We're definitely getting depth of field on the cube, but not on the particles. And that is because, I'm just going to delete our cube, that is because under our settings, if we go down to X particles here, there is high Q render. Now this causes your particles to be rendered faster by having this checked on. It's using a high Q render. Now my understanding of this, how this works, and I might be wrong, is that when it's rendered like this, X particles are not portraying each particle as a physical object, but rather more of a point in space, not an actual object. This means it renders much quicker, but it does not receive depth of field like a physical object would. Reversely, if we turn that off, they now will take longer to render, but they'll be treated like a physical object. So if I hit render now with high Q render off, look how our particles are getting so much depth of field. And I'll make this a whole lot easier just by reducing the f-stop to, say, 2. And you can see we're getting much less blur. And look at these particles that are up close, all blurry. The ones in focus are, and as you go farther back, they're out of focus. All using the physical render much easier. And we can compare. So what I'm going to do is we can compare. We're just going to take our physical render, and we're going to turn off depth of field. And we're going to render to the picture viewer. We're looking at one second. That is with the high Q renderer. And now what we're going to do under X particles is we're going to turn on the high Q renderer. Sorry, that was without the high Q renderer. Right here, this is without. Now we're going to do with it on. You can see there, it wasn't even a second. So we're having a second's worth of time added on. So there is a cost, but in my opinion, the, the ability to have that nice blurry look does mean a lot. And you can actually see that the particles look better as when they're rendered as points. They, they're a little kind of fuzzy here, kind of less hard-edged, supposed to here. They're more tight. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in the video. We can zoom in here. Here's without the high-quality render, and here's with. See, they change size a little bit. It just uh, adds a little bit more to them. But that said, turning that off to render out the depth of field is definitely very nice, and uh, I would recommend that. 
method if that's something you'd um would like to go for. So we're gonna have that off. We're gonna go into our physical oh sorry, physical and we're gonna turn on depth of field. And it is so nice to be able to have that. I can just pop that on, and there we go. So there we're actually getting depth of field. And of course we can go to our settings. I really love using the physicals um progressive renderer, especially for stills and uh and rendering that out so we can continuously refine our image and get sharper and sharper and you can see this is actually rendering very quickly because it is an extremely simple scene thanks again for watching and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this please head to my website at epicjcreations.com you can click that little white dot in the top right corner up there where you can see more tutorials just like this one as well as some of my work thank you again for watching